From seniors gaining new experiences to intriguing stories and creative interest, stick around for all that and more on this edition of Wildcat News. Welcome to the first edition of Wildcat News for 2023. I'm your host, Brooke Holzhauer. Being innovative and creative is something that most high schoolers have no trouble with, especially when it comes to one of the biggest events of the year at the high school. Senior Project is a project that consists of a group of Warwick High School students who learn a skill for the next six months and get mentored through the process, usually by a teacher or someone who is skilled in the trade they aspire to learn. Mr. DeLeo, a senior project team leader, spoke about his experience being involved in it over the years. Um, I've been part of the program since its inception, so we're going on, this is our 16th year. And seeing it come into fruition, that's incredibly important. Um, plus, I also know the college level skills they're going to learn in this program. Mr. DeLeo has been helping students meet their goals and senior project for a long time. And as us Warwick students know, he is also a notable English teacher here. Government teacher Mrs. Fogler is also part of Senior Project. Serving as the other team leader, she shared her insight on this event as well. Oh my gosh, they are so prepared um, for college. They can whip out a research paper really quickly. They make connections. They're able to speak with people. That is the best part about Senior Project. This event also includes a guest speaker. The guest speaker is usually someone who is skilled in something that some of the students may choose to learn, or someone who has words of wisdom for these students. Pat Battle of NBC is this year's guest speaker. 2023 keynote speaker, weekend anchor, and news reporter from WNBC Channel 4 News, this Pat Battle. I was yeah. telling Mr. DeLeo, all of them were so socially and environmentally conscious. It was a passion, but their research papers reflected a desire to go out and make the world a better place. And I think that was what struck me. Every one of them, they were all, every, I can't think of one that did not say, I'm going to donate my proceeds to charity, or I'm going to do something to make the world a better place. They were all fascinating. I, I, the, the, uh, the Loadmaster, the 1948 Loadmaster, that, that's, I want to see that. Senior Project is led with integrity and intelligence by these leaders who will shape and guide these students. Here's what a student involved in Senior Project had to say about the whole experience of being part of it so far. Hey, I'm John Ruskowitz. Uh, for my Senior Project, I'm going to be uh, street legalizing a 1948 Chevrolet Loadmaster. It's a truck that's been sitting on my family's farm for a while, and I thought it'd be good to bring it back to life because I really enjoy the old vehicles and what they used to do. Uh, I'm going to be working on it in Middletown with my uh, mentor, Eric Heinzel, who has been in the business for about a decade, and I'm pretty good friends with him through the hunting camp I go to. And then uh, for my topic, I'm going to be researching the negative effects that electric engines will have on the farming industry. I've been in the business for, well, my family's been in the business for over 100 years, so it's going to directly affect us later on in life, and we face these challenges in the past, so I'm very passionate about this topic. All in all, this year's senior project is one that will impact the students and adults involved for years to come. Well, it was certainly a pleasure to be here today and to hear from the 17 high school seniors who are participating in Senior Project exactly what their projects will be. Uh, you know, this course offers an opportunity for seniors really to hone those, school, those skills that are college and career ready, but to do it in a way where they are in tune to their passion. They have student choice, they can really decide on from the topic to the mentor, uh, and it really is such a great way to end the senior experience. For WVTV, I'm Brooke Holzhauer. If you would like to be part of Senior Project in the future, or if you have any questions, please contact Mr. DeLeo at ndeleo at wvcsd.org or visit him in room 103. As the NBA season progresses, let's take a look at someone who has shaped the league as a whole. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. Tell I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I led you to believe it was easy 
when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you just make him excuses. No matter what the game is or who you're playing against, you have to want the ball. The clock. The pressure. Block all that out. All you think about is what you have to do to win. That's why I love the end of the game. Because it comes down to that one moment when it's all in my hands. I don't always have to hit the last shot, but I do have to walk away knowing I did everything I could to win the game. When you step on the floor, it doesn't matter how many times you've done it before. All that matters is that you do it now. Those are the moments you put in the hours of practice for. Those are the ones you never forget. The NBA clearly knows how to teach and shape a person to become great at what they do. Michael Jordan has truly grown with the NBA and has gained many skills over the years. While celebrities and the scandals that some have had are certainly interesting, none were quite as extensive as this one. Shortly after World War II, hundreds of Hollywood filmmakers were dragged before United States congressional committees and questioned about their political beliefs. Actors and actresses, writers and directors who refused to cooperate with the Washington congressman lost their jobs in Hollywood. None of the studios would hire them. Over 250 top professionals were blacklisted. If you had ever been a communist or had had communist friends, or if you had ever supported liberal causes that communists also supported, you could lose your job. The congressman offered you only one way out. Renounce your beliefs and inform on your friends. One group of Hollywood conservatives invited the House Un-American Activities Committee to investigate communist infiltration in the film industry. The public hearings opened with a week of testimony by anti-communist filmmakers. For five days, they testified that communists were trying to take over the film industry. This is a foul philosophy, this communistic thing. I would, I would move to the state of Texas if it ever came here, because I think the Texans would kill them on sight. Nineteen witnesses opposed to the HUAC hearings were subpoenaed. A delegation of liberal Hollywood stars, including Danny Kaye, Humphrey Bogart, and Lauren Bacall, traveled to Washington to support the 19 unfriendly witnesses. The stars hoped their celebrity status and their first-hand observations of the hearings would sway public opinion against the HUAC investigations. The hearings ended a day early, after only 11 of the 19 unfriendly witnesses had been called. Less than a month after the HUAC hearings, movie studio heads met at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City and issued a statement. We will forthwith discharge or suspend without compensation those in our employ and we will not re-employ any of the ten until such time as he is acquitted or has purged himself of contempt and declares under oath that he is not a communist. The ten unfriendly witnesses were charged with contempt of Congress. They appealed. While their cases dragged through the courts, they could not find work. Neither could the eight unfriendly witnesses who had not testified. Eight of the Hollywood ten served nine months in prison judge gave two others six months. The anti-communist crusade swept through every facet of American life for 15 years, routing out progressives and left wingers from every American institution. Only a handful, after more than 15 years on the blacklist, were able to resume their careers under their real names. The Hollywood blacklist affected hundreds of lives in a generation of Hollywood movies. 
This scandal was like no other, and over the course of 20 years, over 300 stars were blacklisted. After the break, we'll dive into the creative mind of Warwick students. The ecosystem is being destroyed by the commercial fishing industry. Worldwide, 30% of fish species are overfished. 100 million sharks are killed annually every year alone. If this continues, the oceans will soon be empty. Become a member of Save the Fish today. Only you can help stop overfishing. Donate, volunteer, and teach to protect our endangered species. Visit www.savethefish.org to learn more. Welcome back to Wildcat News. As much as the real world can be fascinating and adventurous, escaping reality in different ways can be just as fun. Entering into the portal behind her, Snow vanishes into a place that is familiar, the Feywild. You feel escaped, you feel hope, and you feel the awe and dread that comes with such lands. Ragroots has summoned you through old magic, magic that you imagine could only happen through the dealings of an archfey to a snowy pine barren. There, only 30 feet away from you, Ragroot stands, finishing what he was doing prior, hacking an old druid to bits, reaching up with a mighty club, the tree barrels down, onto the sad, ruined corpse that lays on a forgotten slab. Ragroots gives himself a moment to not only keep you stuck in venom, but Snow, you feel the pricks under your heels shut up with venom as Ragroots gives you what you are. A small, flesh bag to him. You ready yourself as the battle will soon begin. And you wonder what Archfey could allow this to happen. Agroots looks up. So, Snow of the Firewall. Let us begin. If you ever want to step outside of reality, playing a game like Dungeons and Dragons is the perfect thing to do. Being able to escape reality proves that our minds are capable of so much, but sometimes we may start to feel overwhelmed and almost insane for it. You had a vision. A vision to build something that they've never seen before but they gave it one look and called it insanity. You worked hour after hour for little reward. They watched from a distance and deemed it irrational. You simplified your life until it consisted of only your goal. But amidst convoluted objectives and routines, they declared it a tragedy. You failed, and you failed, but you would not give in. And entertained by this struggle, they called you stubborn. Through it all, you never lost faith. They sat back and called it delusional. And then something happened. You succeeded. You succeeded like no one else before. And when you shared your result, they called it genius. When you told your story, they admired the persistence. When you uncovered your knowledge, your learning, your expertise, they asked for advice. See, you provided a blueprint, yet few people follow. 
Now they call you gifted, lucky, and you shake your head because as you made that climb, something became very obvious to you. This word, insanity, defined as extreme foolishness or irrationality, this is what got you to where you are today. And on the surface, when you took that first step, it was insanity. You left what was known, you were questioned, doubted, you looked inexperienced, you fell on your face. And hour after hour, you prayed that it was not in vain, and some days it felt like it was. But every single day, you left something behind. The things that you'd outgrown, the things that would have surrounded your every move had you stayed in that spot, had you been intimidated by the depths of what they call insanity. But you didn't. You traded them for a chance to get what matters most. And now as you gain perspective, you see what was insane yesterday is now everyday reality. It's what you do without giving it a second thought. And you want more. Just the taste made you want more. To see what's out there, to see how far you can push. That is life. And as you prepare to continue down the road ahead of you, the peaks, the valleys, the twists, the turns, the ups and the downs, you realize that the only thing in this world that qualifies as insanity is being unwilling to take that next step. The fear of standing out, of being different, of living a life that was meant for you, that you deserve. Because to disregard that opportunity Oh, the insanity. If you ever feel like you aren't taken seriously or if you are unsure of something, try to think of the positive influences in your life and what you can take away from that. Speaking of positivity, Warwick students are promoting positivity and having fun in a brand new way. How is a 1,500-year-old board game taking over the high school by storm? Is it the student-run chess club or the easy to access website chess.com, which is unblocked on every school Chromebook. Chess Club member Aiden Nevin thinks he knows the truth. I think with the uh, recent addition of the new uh, Chess Club, there have been a lot of children going to uh, Mr. Fothergill's room, you know, head upstairs, come take a look. Uh, but I think there's a lot of kids hopping on this little chess wave that's going around in the school. You know, I see a lot of people playing chess on their Chromebooks now. I see a lot of people playing chess on their phones. Come on down to the chess club. You got real pieces and people who are going to make you smile. I think chess can also be a distraction with how much people do like it in the classroom. And I honestly just think playing chess while you're supposed to be focusing on your studies. Come on, guys, we can do better than that. There's a time and a place for chess. Avid FIFA mobile player Trevor Stevens is against the chess club. My boy Jackson always asks me to go to the meetings and I give in because he's my boy. Then I go in to those meetings and it's just so depressing. Everybody's quiet, they're sitting in their chairs, just playing chess, nobody's talking. I try to make a joke, they tell me to be quiet. And then ultimately we leave probably after like five minutes because we realize it sucks in there. The thing is, the kids in chess club aren't even good at chess. Is this kid Aiden? He sucks at chess. Just, uh, I don't know, just play FIFA or something else. Chess sucks. English teacher Miss Debella is fed up with students distracting themselves with chess in class. As much as I love the fact that they're playing chess, I wish it wasn't happening in my classroom on a computer. The only option I have is to tell them to close their screen, but other than that, I, I don't have much control. <laughs> Keep playing chess, but not on computers in my classroom. It seems as though chess will continue to be a divisive issue at the WBHS. For WVTV, I'm Rory O'Connor. Go Chess Club! The Chess Club seems to be all the craze and worth checking out, so give it a try. You never know what friendships and memories might be in store. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of Wildcat News. I've been your host, Brooke Holtower, hoping to see you next time. What can you do in 15 minutes? You can eat, make and eat a sandwich or you could die. Every 15 minutes a teenager dies due to drunk driving accidents. This is over 35,000 deaths a year. 
When it comes to processing a drink, 15 minutes won't cut it. You will need at least an hour. Nova is the recognized leader in victim advocacy and helps people get the services they need. By supporting them, we can help make sure that nothing bad happens in the next 15 minutes.